Chapter 7. The Distance Between You and Me I stared down at the Pokeball in my hands. It was cool to the touch, unlike Des's, which was almost always hot, though from being in my pocket rather than by his heat. Though it was exactly the same size and probably the same weight, it felt blasphemous to be holding that Pokeball instead of my Nummels. Hey! I said, but it came out as hardly more than a squeak. I didn't want this angry little shroomish who could dance. I wanted pedestal. My head snapped up, glare at the ready, but the man was no longer behind his cardboard box. Hey! This time it was definitely louder, but came out much more shrill than my usual voice. A few passerby turned and stared. I looked around and spotted a tattered lab coat disappearing through the crowd. I leapt to my feet and ran blindly in that direction, heart pounding in my ears. Pedestal, my very own Pokemon, had just been taken from me. Stolen. Well, traded, but it was not a trade I had agreed to. That made it illegal in my eyes, as illegal as murder or treason. Never mind the fact that I had contemplated theft before, that had been jokingly. Stop! I shouted desperately, trying to push my way past pedestrians while keeping his fleeing back in my line of sight. He wasn't a track star if an 11-year-old kid was keeping somewhat up with him, but I wasn't going to look the gift ponyta in the mouth. Stop! Thief! That, more than my feeble attempts with stop, got people's attention. Several heads turned in time to see a man and kid run by, but they were too late to do anything, really, unless one of them called the police or something. The sidewalks got more crowded the further downtown we got, until finally it was all but impassable. It was the rush hour, after all, so it was packed everywhere. This was when my smaller size lent me the advantage. I could slip past people more easily than he could. Thief! Stop him! I kept yelling, if only to attract attention. Maybe some curious bystander would get in his way in order to see what I was yelling about. It was worth a try. Eventually, he gave up on the sidewalks and ran into the road. The cars were moving pretty slowly since it was nearly packed, but the man nearly got run over all the same. I followed him without a second thought, though I entered the street in front of a stopped car at least. He ducked behind a taxi and made it to the other side. I had to jump onto a hood in order to keep him in sight. The man ran into a department store. This was both good and bad. It meant that I could raise a ruckus inside where there was a greater chance of someone stopping both of us, but it also meant that there were more places to hide. I darted into the store just as I saw his white lab coat disappearing up the escalator. Someone stop him! I yelped, not pausing to point him out to anyone. At this point, I was doing little more than screaming and running. Even if someone else stopped him, I wasn't going to give up. I wanted at least one kick at his face for taking Des in the first place. By the time I reached the next floor, a scuffle had broken out. Panting, I reached the top of the escalator. The man in the patchwork clothes was pinned to the ground, though still struggling by another man. One knee dug into the thief's back and one hand was working furiously to free the Pokeball, Dez's Pokeball, from his grip. Both of them were yelling and already other shoppers were gathering, whispering among themselves. Get off me! This is assault! Assault! Let go of the Pokeball and maybe I won't break your fingers! You all heard that! Assault! Threatening me! He's- Ow! Let go of the Pokeball! I kept a cautious distance, half hiding behind a pair of shopping women. Now, though the man who'd stolen Pedestal was successfully halted, I was even more afraid. The man who'd caught him seemed scarier. Who cared if he seemed to be helping me? He looked ready to kill, and I didn't know him. He seemed the epitome of the deranged, murderous strangers that my parents always warned me about. Has someone called the police yet? One of the shopping women asked in a low voice, nervously glancing at the scrap. The other nodded. Oh yes, I saw a couple of girls do it when he first tackled him. Then the man pinned to the ground, the thief, finally let go of the Pokeball. It rolled away from his fingers, just a few inches, but so that he had no chance of grabbing it again unless he threw his assailant off. By a happy coincidence, it had actually rolled a bit closer to me. By another slightly happy coincidence, the two women in front of me, who I couldn't get past without alerting them, decided to leave. They shuffled away apprehensively, muttering among themselves something about getting caught in the scene. I didn't bother caring. Pedestal's Pokeball was just a yard or so in front of me, a quick leap in and a dash out. No one would be able to catch me, certainly not the two men on the ground. I crouched down and sprung forward. My numble was back in my hands before anyone noticed I had left the crowd. Then, just as I was turning to run for it, however, I felt something like iron clamped down on the back of my shirt. Where do you think you're going? 
Heart pounding, I turned to look over my shoulder. It was the man who had been attacking the other for Dez's Pokeball. A thought occurred to me then. What if he had only been stopping him so he could steal it? Is that your Pokemon in there? Y yes sir. I doubted my voice could sound any more like a frightened Mareep. Can you prove that? Yes, it's my Nummel. What about that other Pokeball you're holding? He asked, icy eyes boring into mine. I hastily turned away from him again, aware once more that I was holding the Shroomish's Pokeball, Carlita's. A Shroomish? What is going on here? Like the clouds parting to let the sun through, bystanders scattered as a harried Officer Jenny marched through. Her Growlithe was growling, sticking abnormally close to her legs. She tilted her head back and glared down at the three of us, planting her gloved hands on her hips. She didn't wait for us to reply. It seems as if this is a fight, not only in a public place, but also between trainers, is it? A kid, too. Let the kid go, sir, now. I probably would have run for it then and there if the Growlithe hadn't been blocking my way. That was how I found myself in the Jubilife police station, wondering about my phone call. Should I call my parents, or skip the middleman and call the Undertaker? I was surely dead either way. At least I got Pedestal back, right? <laughs>